listening to the House by the Video Store podcast. Welcome to a bonus episode of the House by the Video Store podcast. I'm your host, William, and joining me today will be Sean. Hello. And we're talking about the third episode of Season 10 of The X-Files. Mulder and Scully meet the Monster. And this is a Darren Morgan written and directed episode. And he had done a number of episodes in the original run of the series that tilted much more to the humorous side, which were Humbug, Clav Reckman's Final Repose, uh, Jose Chunk's Final Space, War of the Copperphages. And this episode very much falls in line with the style of comedy from some of those earlier episodes. Yeah, I just recognize those titles i mean from one from you talking about them because i i haven't dug back into x files since watching it just when it aired um but yeah you've done a video on all those except for that last one right yes i have not done a video on that that was the one about the roach uh little uh robotic roaches (laughs) yeah so you uh yeah obviously a fan of his since you decided to highlight those episodes yeah i mean because out of like my top because I like the videos I've done have all been kind of the standalone monster of the week or you know non uh, mythology. Yeah, the non mythology episodes. And out of those, like my favorite is Jose Jose Chunks from Outer Space, which was a Dare Morgan episode. And then right then I think it's probably Home. And then after that, Clyde Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose, which is another Dare Morgan episode. So I will really like the episodes that he's done of the series. Um. And on this episode, like, we were I, talking- I think I think after this episode, I'm going to definitely go back and watch those soon because this was like just a high level of enjoyment throughout. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed this one quite a bit as well. Um, it had, you know, fun performances from everybody. It was much more of a Mulder driven episode than mm-hmm. uh, Scully. But I think part of that is in the prior Darren Morgan episodes that uh i just mentioned the out of those three of them were kind of more scully stories and kind of painted molders and ass <laughs> mm. so this one was kind of focused on him and kind of gave him a little bit more play than he usually gets in the the darren morgan episodes yeah he w- i mean he was almost like the you know sh- she was almost like the straight man you know yeah and he was kind of the goofy like wild i mean granted i know he, she's always kind of the the center to his um, theories and everything. But yeah, he was very much kind of out there and somebody to laugh at through the whole episode. And uh, you know, I have to mention that the big guest stars on this episode, you had Rise Darby, who was Guy Mann, who was very That's funny a good name. in this episode. Guy yeah. Mann. <laughs> Yeah, I think when they found like his bottle of pills, I was like, I don't think that's his real name. <laughs> yeah, that's such a great name considering the plot. And this will be full spoilers for this too. So yeah. definitely make sure you watch this because it is so good. Yep, you can watch it for free on Fox.com or via their app or Hulu. Uh, I don't know if it'll end up on Netflix. If it does, it'll be quite a while. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so full spoilers. The you know pretty clever conceit of the wear monster not being a person that's turning into a monster as you know, a lot of these types of things would typically go, but it's a monster that turns into a man yeah, after getting bit by a man. <laughs> yeah. Which was uh, Camille Nanjani who hosts the X-Files files, which was a podcast that I don't know that was the, you know, driving motion that got the show to come, come back, but it definitely helped create a different atmosphere around the show. Cause apparently they're working on the survival before that podcast series kind of took off, mm. but that really helped them convince people like, Hey, there's still a hunger for this content. Yeah. People still like the show. And so he was in this episode in a funny part. And, you know, we, you know, just from what we've said, like I, I enjoyed it and Sean, you enjoyed it. I looked online as this episode was airing and after it aired, cause I was just curious about how the average viewer felt about it. And a lot of people really hated this episode because uh, it was the more comedic uh, style. It wasn't, you know, Alien Conspiracy. It was kind of a one-off that was, you know, for all intents and purposes, like just a comedy. It wasn't anything serious. Uh, You had kind of jokes and callbacks. And some of the points that people brought up as things they disliked about this episode, like I would have to dispute. So they said like, oh, well, Mulder was burnt out and he wasn't, you know, a believer and that that's really out of character. But they forget about season 
2005, there was a period of time where somebody from the, I believe it was the Department of Defense, had given Mulder and Scully information that painted it as if a lot of the things they had seen were all part of an elaborate ruse to cover up testing the government was doing. So uh-huh. there was a period of time where Mulder was a skeptic about alien stuff and when shutting people down, it's like, no, that's not true. Yeah. So that has happened in the series before. I know. I think it's a fun turn. Like, I, you know, again, with people complaining about it being a comedic episode, I get it if you don't, if you don't think it's funny and you don't, I don't know if it doesn't appeal to you, but for me, um, kind of the appeal of the X-Files too is the, the kind of scope of the episodes where there'll be the mythology ones, the monster of the week. And there's just, they pull in different directors and people who are very creative and make it their own. Again, this is a, you know, somebody coming in, making it their own and giving you a a more comedic approach. So just like the monster of the week, it's like you get different tones and functions for episodes. And it's just like an entertaining thing to watch. Yeah. And, you know, this episode was by far the one that had the most callbacks to prior episodes. Um, Because, you know, the episode opened up on some paint huffing, uh, some spray paint huffing stoners that uh, one of the most Tyler Labine, who was in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, if you've ever seen that. Yeah. And those were actually characters that appeared in two prior episodes in War of the... Uh, how did I pronounce that earlier? War of the Copophages. Yeah, it's close Co- War of the Copperphages. There we go. <laughs> uh, they were in that episode, and then they were in Quagmire, which was an episode from later in Season 3. It was kind of a Loch Ness monster mm. story. That, that, that's what they thought it was. It was actually just an alligator. So that was another episode they appeared in. And then there was also a callback to um, the dog Queequeg that Scully had in season three that she got as a result of Clive Buckman's final repose. Then old lady passed away and she kept her dog. And the dog was then eaten by the alligator in Quagmire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, and you say this has the most callbacks to the other episodes and stuff. Sometimes callbacks will get in the way and it kind of maybe breaks the reality of some things, you know, a lot of these modern um, uh, revivals like Star Wars and all that stuff. Some people kind of complain about it, but for this being a comedic episode, it totally fits in line with it. Like, you know what I mean? That doesn't break anything about it. It's just supposed to be a fun light episode. And it's like, it's fun on many levels because of all these references and stuff. So if they would have thrown all these into like the other episodes, like nonstop, it may have been overwhelming and a little like, oh, this is just kind of gimmicky. But for this, I think it totally works considering it's a it's a comedic episode. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. There's a few other there's a few other references. Uh, Mulder talks about he would like to die, and Scully mentions, "Don't you know, Mulder, I'm immortal." And those are callbacks, kind of to Clyde Bruckman's final repose when he had indicated that Mulder would die of uh, autoerotic asphyxiation. And Man, imagine if that really happens to David <laughs> Coveney. And then uh, when Scully asked how she died, he said, you don't. So that's where the immortal thing comes from. Uh, let's see what else. There was uh, when the creature, the wear monster, runs into a porta potty and they open it up and it's Guy Man. Uh, that, I think, was somewhat of a reference to the episode The Host, which was the one about the fluke man monster which was actually Darren Morgan, who was in the Fluke Man suit for the episode. So that was a slight reference mm. to that. And that's the only thing in that episode that really wasn't explained was how he, you know, it showed that when Guy Man became the wear monster, he took his clothing off. Yeah. And when they, he, you know, wasn't wearing anything, and they opened the porta potty and he had, like, the suit jacket and the hat and all that. So how did he get his clothes? If yeah. He took them off? Well, and at the end of the episode... You know, he says they're talking about it not making sense. And he's like, none of this makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so again, it's a light episode. So I think it's like it that was a fine way to, to explain away some of that stuff because, you know, none of it was taken seriously at all. Yeah. See, uh, other it was ref- a fun gag. You know what I mean? Like that whole chase was very fun. Well, I think, too, like the structure of the episode. So one other thing that people would kind of criticize, there's a very long stretch where Guy Man and Mulder talk in a mm-hmm. um cemetery and guy man kind of point by point steps through everything that happened and that was a you know kind of a long sequence so some people thought that was you know drug the episode down but i thought that um you know it was well done and it didn't really break anything in the episode and it kind of gave you the fun backstory and how all that happened yeah and see put it all in context 
for me, there was so much going on in the beginning and it was like really high. And I'm not saying it was low, like it just some parts were higher, some parts were lower. Um, the cemetery stuff was great. I thought that was a, an awesome reveal. And I was like in that the whole time. But I think before that, when Mulder is kind of, I think, going to psychiatrist and all that stuff. Yeah, that is totally fine and entertaining. But that was like maybe the lowest, the low point of the episode. That that was the lull for me, and it wasn't even really that long because once he got into the cemetery, that stuff I was actually fine with. Um, but yeah, that was like I I did think maybe it could have been balanced a little bit more um, because it was so front front heavy with you know it was really funny and really action packed and a lot was going on in the front end and then it was a lot of dialogue. Granted, it was great dialogue and it was funny, um, but yeah, there was it felt like I was a little imbalanced there. But still, I mean, it was, you know, the, it wasn't that long. It was for 44 minutes. This, stu- this episode was packed full of reveals, fun twists, um, lots of humor. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's going to be pretty hard to top this episode in my book as far as entertainment value goes. Yeah, I mean, to, um, <laughs> so one of the other references was um, the hotel they stayed at, the the kind of seedy hotel where the owner has peepholes in everybody's <laughs> rooms. <laughs> Uh, who was actually an actor that had appeared in prior episodes written by Darren Morgan. Um, but uh, when he's looking at nighttime and it shows Mulder asleep in his red Speedo, that was a callback to the infamous scene of Mulder wearing a Speedo and Dwayne Barry where he's swimming at a pool. <laughs> that uh, I'm sure there's some uh, slash fiction about that. Uh, in the graveyard, the tombstones, the one that was prominently featured was Kim Manners, who was a director who was behind the most episodes of any director during the X-Files run. Mm. He directed 52 in total, and uh, he passed away a few years ago, so that was one of them. And then the other tombstone was Jack Hardy, who was an assistant director on Millennium and the Lone Gunman, which were X-Files spinoff shows. Oh, yeah. And uh, he also did that on the uh, second movie, I Want to Believe. Did, did Vince Gilligan work on the Lone Gunman spinoff show? Uh, he may have. I don't I remember girl. when that was. Because that was, I think it was after the movie. Because I remember watching it and I enjoyed it, but it didn't, you know. The X-Files, I don't think at that time, had enough uh, uh, pull to support multiple spinoffs because there was that in Millennium. Not that yeah. Millennium was a spinoff, but they they tied Millennium back into the X-Files once it, the show uh, got canceled, but... Yeah, um, it, it looks like, yeah, it looks like Vince Gilligan is credited as being a creator and has writing credits for 13 of those episodes. Okay, yeah, because he was also a writer on The X-Files. I believe he started towards the, or got on staff around the end of season three, then wrote a lot of the really good episodes and like Black, Bad Blood, which is another very humorous episode that had Luke Wilson in it. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Uh, Mulder's ringtone was just the X-Files theme song, which was kind of, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, then the dog, uh, Guy Man's dog, Dagoo, was, you know, just kind of tied back to the the quick quick kind of reference from Clyde Bruckman's where at the end of the episode, Scully took the dog. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I thought that the overall structure of the episode was fun. And too, unlike Jose Chung's Spender Space, which was a very um, debated episode, people, you know, ask like, so what actually happened? And mm-hmm. even Darren Morgan, the on I means in the X-Files files even said like, well, there's some stuff that I'm not even sure about myself, but this episode was very straightforward, I think, is kind of uh, almost nod to that. That oh, yeah. guy man kind of laid out everything that happened. But then again, it could have been Mulder hallucinating stuff. Yeah. I mean, who knows? But um, I, I love Mulder with, uh, you know, with his phone trying to make sure to catch, uh, you know, proof of the monster and everything. Yeah. Love that whole bit. Um and he's like, I don't know if it's working right. He's like, did you check the settings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, I love just kind of the deadpan on that from uh, Camille, that character, just how that worked out. Then uh, Guy Man working at the uh, cell phone store. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all of that. You know, I need to get a mortgage. I don't even know what that is. Like, uh, this phone's very rectangular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of fun moments and and humor. Like if you don't like the humorous style of the ep- or the humorous episodes of the X Files, and I mean this, I don't, you probably would have problems with it because it very much did not take itself seriously. 
because all the episodes that Darren Morgan has done, for the most part, always kind of, you know, break down what the show is and kind of put it under the microscope and show how ridiculous some of it is. That's but no, what, what I love about it, just but, kind of deconstructing, you know. Yeah, it deconstructs it, but in a way that doesn't, you know, break future episodes. Yeah. It just kind yeah. of examines what they're doing. And I think this episode kind of went along with that. Um you know, after they had somebody tell them that everything they knew was a lie and there was something else that was actually happening, you know, they get to go in this case where it's, you know, because it opened up with Mulder going through a lot of old files and how they all got debunked. And, yeah. you know, it I, starts off just funny right out of the gate, you know. Well, it's, it starts off funny, the first scenes with uh, the stoners, but then even going into Mulder and Scully, like their exchange or dialogue, him throwing the pencils at the poster and everything. Because yeah, that was a. Another reference, because he used to throw them into the ceiling, so now he's throwing them into the uh, into the poster. And um, the relationship with Mulder and Scully in this episode, they only touch on a little bit, and, you know, Scully says, oh, this is... <laughs> While she's doing an autopsy, talking about how fun it was to work on those cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's next to a dead man who's dead as a, as a result of whatever's and, killing people. And right before that, he's uh, he's showing her the pictures. Or was this... Did she do two autopsies in this episode, or was it just the one? I think there was just the one that okay, showed. Well, because he's, like, putting the phone in her face. He's like, look yeah. at this, look at this. I've got, I think i got an ear there. <laughs> yeah, then, um, and then she says later, this is how I like my molder. Yeah. Like when he's kind of on his, you know, believing versus being just a dour doubter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, it's just, I mean, just such strong writing, and, and yeah, their performances, um, it was very light and fast and, and, uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't think I could have enjoyed this much more at all. Yeah. It's definitely, whenever I saw that they were doing the revival of the series and I looked at, you know, I was waiting like, well, who are the writers? Is it just Chris Carter? Because, uh, some of his episodes such as my struggle, which was the opener. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I saw that they had, um, Darren Morgan, I was like, Oh, Okay, so they got my favorite writer at least to do one episode. So I really enjoyed that. I need to rewatch it. I already watched it twice because I may do a video on it. Uh, but I'll have to go back because his episodes are kind of dense. And you have to kind of rewatch them a few times to catch everything and to see how it all fits. But I really enjoyed the episode. I thought the humor worked. I thought the guest stars were great. Um, there was one odd sequence where Mulder was explaining what uh transgendered individuals are to guy man <laughs> yeah <laughs> which some people thought was modern and you know current like the correct way to to discuss that some people thought it was like kind of outdated and offensive i mean i didn't really think it was offensive or anything of, no it was kind of a baseline <laughs> explanation of somebody who had no concept you know what i mean like yeah he was trying to break it down in the simplest terms possible yeah but it's an episode i enjoyed Overall, most of the critics have said it's the best episode of the first three. Uh, a lot of fans and viewers have echoed that. A lot of them have echoed the exact opposite and talked about how much they hate it. I, however, enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, oh, and two, just one brief thing, just going back to last week's little bonus episode. Uh, we mentioned on the regular podcast, but if you don't listen to those, uh, we did have one guffaw where we had, uh, instead of saying dream sequence or fantasy sequence we said flashbacks oh yeah which is what we intended was what we were mm -hmm. meaning because it wasn't a flashback to a literal thing that happened since they this is just about when Mulder and scully were um having you know fantasies or dream sequences or just visions or repressed repressed fears or whatever about yeah i think William. we i think we put in the term flashbacks because it wasn't like they were necessarily they weren't necessarily sleep necessarily sleeping right no, nah, they were just yeah, thinking. Yeah, I was just thinking. So, yeah, that's. I think that's why I probably brought that up first is because it, it kind of was the same uh, feeling as far as the show function of a flashback, even though it didn't actually happen. Yep. Yep, so that uh, that was last week. If there's any things that, you know, corrections or anything like that, you can always send us an email at podcast at housebythevideostore.com or leave a comment uh, if you're listening on YouTube or to the podcast to the uh, podcast, yeah, and the podcast yeah, leave, feed. Leave a comment. Let us know if you didn't like the episode or if you liked it. Like, you know, what'd you think about it? How does it rank um, as far as these, this new season, season 10? Yep. So if you're enjoying the podcast, it always helps us out if you go into iTunes and give us a review there because that'll help other people find the podcast and know what to expect. Um, 
But I think that'll wrap up this bonus episode. Thanks for listening.